I'm Mike Mittendorf, a professor of theology at Concordia University in Irvine, California. During a concert here last May, members of our Songwriter Initiative group performed some of the songs they had written at a retreat just that past week. My personal favorite was titled Toda Yahweh. The tune is immediately catchy and joyful. It's now been released, so please go check it out. However, while all the lyrics are great, those two words in the title might be a little confusing at first. They're Hebrew, Toda Yahweh. The latter term, Yahweh, is actually the personal name of God throughout the Old Testament. It occurs over 6,000 times. But in most English Bibles, it's been replaced by capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. So to help you understand the song better, I thought it would be helpful to explain those two Hebrew words. So I brought my friend and colleague, Dr. Paul Elliott, here to discuss that with us. He is our lead Old Testament professor and our resident Hebrew genius. So, uh, Paul, when most people hear Toda Yahweh, they might be initially confused by both of those words. So let's start with the easier one, Toda. What does that mean in Hebrew? Yeah, Toda just means thanks or thanksgiving. In modern Hebrew, it's just how you say thank you. You know, Toda Raba, thank you very much. All right, that, that's simpler. But as I mentioned above, the Yahweh part occurs thousands of times in a Hebrew Bible as God's personal name. Now, where did that name get revealed and what do you think it means? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the classic text here is the burning bush. Moses at burning bush is uh, receiving the call to save God's people from Egypt and he asks God for his name and God says, I am who I am. And says, tell them that Yahweh sent you. And so the meaning of this name is tied into the verb to be. That's why he says, I am who I am. He's saying that's where the root of this word is, to be. And so this can mean more than one thing, though. What does it mean that God's name comes from is? <laughs> well, I mean, one possibility is it's, uh, it's, he is the source of all being. God is the source of all being. This is emphasizing God as creator. So he's the creator God he's revealing to Moses. A second possibility is it could be that this is... Uh, he is the God who is forever. In other words, he's not like the pagan gods that were born at some point in time, but he is a God who was before all things existed and will last beyond all things. That he is the eternal God. Okay. But I actually prefer the third possibility, and that is that uh, this is about God's faithfulness. God is today who he was back then, who he will be forever. So in other words, God does never change his character. His character is consistent. Uh, I think this is especially true because the Exodus is the fulfillment of a promise. Uh, God promised Abraham that he would rescue his descendants from Egypt. And so here in the Exodus, God is fulfilling that ancient promise. And so God is saying, I am the same God I was to Abraham, the same God I will be with you always. Or as the New Testament puts it, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Okay, good. Thank you very much. And most Hebrew names just get transliterated into English letters in the New Testament, like Abraham, Sarah, Josiah, Isaiah, all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, what's happened to Yahweh, and why doesn't it as appear as a name in mm -hmm. almost all English Bibles? Yeah, this seems to have happened sometime probably around the 2nd or 3rd century B.C., because already when they translate the Bible into Greek, mm -hmm. they're doing this. They've replaced the personal name Yahweh with uh, the Lord, or in Hebrew, Adonai. Mm -hmm. Uh, you also see the substitution of the name, Hashem. And so probably the reason why this happened was because of the commandment God gives, do not misuse the name of Yahweh, your God. And obviously, if you never use the name, you can never misuse it. And so it seems that at some point a tradition had developed to prevent people from using it trivially, using it for silly reasons, to just simply never say the name and always substitute one of these other names, the Lord or uh, the name. Hmm. So it kind of moved from a name to a title in mm -hmm. both of those cases, right? Yeah, so those are both titles, and so we might get the idea that it's a title, which makes some Bible passages weird. We say something like, my name is the Lord. <laughs> oh, my name is Yahweh. Okay, it makes okay. more sense there. Yes. Yeah. yeah, all right, good. So for Christians, is it appropriate for us to use the name here today as this song clearly does? Mm -hmm. Right. So there's definitely some caution here, right? You don't want to use the name flippantly mm -hmm. or for silly reasons, uh, because that's exactly what the commandment is forbidding. But that doesn't mean we can never use it. So I think there's, you know, some wisdom in when to use it. You know, certainly don't use it for silly reasons. Also, you know, I've spent a lot of time with uh, Jewish colleagues, and out of respect for them, I avoid using the name 
because uh, there's a strong, you know, resistance to using that name in that culture. But I think that we can take uh, Luther's advice here. When Luther uh, talks about how to keep the commandment, he says, not only do you not use it wrongly, but you should use it rightly. Right? He says, pray, praise, and give thanks. And that's exactly what this song is doing. We're saying, Toda Yahweh, give thanks to Yahweh. Good. Yeah, and as I've studied numerous Hebrew names in, in the Old Testament, a lot of them have at least part of Yah in them at the mm. front of the back. Could you just explain how mm. that uh, happens? And mm -hmm. maybe there's some implications for us as well of having the name of God upon us. Yeah, so a lot of Hebrew names have Yah or Yo or Ye or Yahoo <laughs> in them. Basically taking two or three of those consonants from YHWH, Yahweh, taking two or three of those consonants and sticking them in their own name. And I think that the purpose here is their name becomes a confession of faith. Mm. We call these theophoric names. You know, these are names that bear the name of God. And so these are a way for the parents to confess the faith that they want this child to uphold mm. and a constant reminder, you know, so names like uh, Isaiah, Yahweh saves, or uh, Jeremiah, Yahweh is exalted. You know, these names all are uh, enforcing that this is who our God is, and this is who our identity is, as mm -hmm. the people of that God. Yeah, very good, very important. Well, thanks, Paul. So uh, if you haven't already, please go check out Toda Yahweh. I'm sure you're going to love the song, too, and I hope this helps you to understand uh, what it's about. On the one hand, I love my Christian ties. I am who I am, Paul told us, and that's on this one. And you probably all know a little bit of this, not just from the names Paul referred to, but when we sing Hallelujah, there is a shortened form of Yahweh. And again, there, praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. I think that's a great place to end. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you.